Hey guys, today I am on a mission. The mission is to convince everyone watching this video here that TouchWiz doesn't suck anymore. <laughs> no, I know I won't be able to do just that, but still. I wanted to give you my software review for the Samsung Galaxy S7, a list with all the good stuff, but also all the bad stuff. So let's just start off with that because it's actually not that much. The first thing would be bad RAM management. We have a 4GB device, but let's be honest, it still feels mostly like a 3GB device at best. No real issue for me, but still is one of the things that I would like to see addressed in the future. The next thing would be bloat apps. Yes, out of the box there is a ton installed, but you can just download Packages Ableau Pro and that is something that I would recommend because it's a quite easy solution to get rid of most of the bloat. It just disables all of it instead of uninstalling it but without root for right now. That's the best solution that I found. The next thing would be neither a pro nor a con but something I would like to call wasted potential and that is always on display. Because right out of the box what it does is give you the time and give you missed notifications like calls and emails. But without the proper third party support I think it's pretty much useless and that's why I won't use it for sure, that's why I call it wasted potential. Enough with the bad stuff, let's start with the good stuff. The first thing that is really making a big difference for me is the theme engine. Because as you can see here we have the theme store, you can download all of them quite easily, just apply them. It's not maybe super capable because quite limited in what you can actually change, but the themes are really nice. As you can see here I am using black edition and this one makes the whole UI black. Really minimalistic and clean, looks definitely way nicer than stock Android or stock touch with start out of the box. So big change for me. The next thing would be quick settings. As you can see you drop down, you see 5 notifications, you scroll to the side and see 5 again. The good thing though now is you can just swipe once again, see all of the quick settings even the disabled ones and if you want to have even quicker access just use two fingers and you have that. That is a quite easy and really nice solution to get access to your quick settings, I really like that. The next thing would be quick pop-up window or just pop-up window because what it does is you just swipe from the side in and it gives you a small little window that you can resize and drag around and you can also make it smaller if you want to, also bigger and the cool thing is if you actually do this you can minimize it have a little icon here that you can access every time you want to. Definitely a really really nice solution. Which is also kind of similar to dual window. Because if you go for example in an app that supports it, press long and then you have the browser here. This is something that we will get in Android N soon, but we already have it now on TouchWiz. Really really nice, I really like that. The next thing would be a customizable settings menu. And what I mean by this are these 9 icons, because you hit edit and then you can choose from 3 to 9 icons that you can use to get quick access to certain settings, your most favorite settings that you like to use. Definitely makes it quite easy to access things now, I really like that. The next thing would be a font changer, because if you go into display, go to font, you can not just change the size but also the font as well along with downloading different ones in the store, definitely really nice. The next thing would be screen mode, we have four different modes, adaptive display, also AMOLED cinema which boosts the color even more so, AMOLED photo and basic which are a little bit more realistic but I think the white is just too yellow, that's why I am staying away from that but it's nice to have. The next thing would be the notification LED, we have a multicolor notification LED, out of the box it doesn't really do much but if you for example use now an app called like for example Lightflow, you can change every app to have a certain notification color LED and even the pattern can be changed and the behavior, not something stock inbuilt into, into touch with, but it's nice that it works so without any flaws. The next thing would be game tools. If you enter an app, now there will be this small little icon, you just hit it and then you have the following settings. No alerts during game, lock the recent and back keys which is really nice because if you play a game you won't just throw won't be thrown out of it because you can't touch the keys anymore also minimize game screenshot and a screen record function really nice to have that definitely a nice tool definitely nice to see the next thing would be one-handed operation something that could be quite useful for a few people out there what you have to do is go into advanced settings one hand operation turn it on and now by hitting the home button three times you have a smaller screen now and it's pretty much the exact same way as you would use the device as you can see here you go to the home screen and everything works exactly the same way and you can just return quite easily out of that definitely something nice if it especially for example on the samsung galaxy s7 edge which is just a little bit bigger 
The next thing that I want to talk about is the first party UI design, which is in my opinion really nice because if you see the clock here, it looks really, really nice. Of course, this one is also already themed, but I really, really like the same as for example, S Planner with a theme. This looks really nice, really nice design functionality is also there. So I really like that. And the last thing that would be inbuilt display scaling, something I just found out today. If you set the real shortcut, the proper shortcut here, I will just link you to that through the XDA link where I found it. You can set up the shortcut and now you have standard and condensed. Condensed just makes the DPI a little bit smaller, something I already did and something that is really nice to see. But for me, the issue is that, for example, since I use Swift key, the keyboard is a little bit too small for me. I just like the keyboard a little bit bigger and since SwiftKey doesn't scale properly with the UI. I'm not quite so sure if I will use it, but these are the pros, these are the cons of the Samsung Galaxy S7 software. For me, definitely the pros outweigh the cons by a lot. I really like it because let's see the bad stuff. Bad RAM management, not really an issue. Four gigabytes still do a great job. Bloat apps, you can get rid of all of them. That's also already pretty much it. The one thing that I would really like to see a little bit of further improvement would be always on because I would really like to have it. But you also saw there is a lot of good stuff to like about it. I think the UI itself looks clean now. It is quite lightweight in terms of performance and all that. I really like the functionality now. So all I can say is they did a great job. It's the best version of TouchWiz ever yet. And I think it actually is superior to pretty much all the other third party UIs. And actually just in terms of functionality and looks for me personally, it even beats stock Android. Yes, I know a lot of people will complain now about that, but that's okay. Just leave that down in the comments if you want to. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, reshare it, do all the nice rest of the things that you want to do. I wish you a nice day. And I hope you enjoy your Samsung Galaxy S7 if you have one or if you maybe think about buying one. Okay, until next time, bye.